Okay, so I have a 1954 Smith Corona Silent Super for you today. And this is the, um, boy, I don't know what the actual color of this, but it's kind of a beige with the green keys and the green speed lines. All kinds of green accents. So the knobs are green. The back plate is green. Even the, um, the ruler down here or the, oh gosh, can't think of the official name of it, but the metal, uh, uh, paper holder down here that is green as well so let's take a look at it see how it performs and uh, I'll give you kind of an assessment of who I think this would work best for okay so we've got let me pull this up just a little bit okay so we've got our paper holder right there if you pop the back open, I don't know if you saw me do that, you just pop it open and uh, flip it up. Um, you can see the workings for the um, margins, but you actually, this is just good for cleaning. You actually don't need to get in there a lot. Um, in other models, it is where the tab is. This model, the tab's down here. So you hit clear and set down here. But just so you know, it was, I'm embarrassed to say that it was a really long time, I'm not going to tell you how long, before I realized that the back opened up. I could not figure out how to work tabs on these Smith Coronas. So sometimes the tab sets are here and sometimes they're underneath this. Margins, press and drag. Okay. Um, the line selector, which is when you hit the return handle, is it going to advance? How many lines is it going to advance? It's right here. Choose between one, two, or three. Carriage release are the metal levers behind the handles. You just pull that in. There is the bell. It's a little faint, but it is there. Paper release is right here, and this releases the tension on the paper so that if it's crooked, you can adjust that. I'm going to leave this to the left just a little bit. Pop the top open and inside you're going to see the ribbon. Now the ribbon we've put in there a new one and it's a universal ribbon. You can get additional ribbons on our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com. When it is time to replace the ribbon, you just pull this out, pop the new one in, make sure it's threaded properly. You can look on our website. If you look at the link in the description below, it'll take you to photos of this typewriter and, um, and I have an up close photo of the escapement so you can see how to thread it. Now, one thing you need to know, the ribbon on here isn't actually very long. So when you get to the end of the spool, you have to reverse the direction because there's a lot of ink in here and you do that right here. Okay. So that's going to reverse the direction of your, um, ribbon. Um, and so you should be able to reverse the direction many times. I have a similar typewriter, except it's electric. And I've probably reversed the direction on my thing at least 50 times, if not more, um, before I need to change out the ribbon. Um, that's just the way it is. So this is your touch selector. And all it does is determine how hard these type keys are going to strike your paper. A lot of times you can't even tell a difference. On the um, frame here um, is is stamped in the frame on the left side is your serial number for your typewriter. I'm going to close that. Color selector, make sure it's on black or red. The white doesn't do anything. In fact, if it's on the white, it's not going to type right. And so just that's one thing to check, which reminds me with your, okay, this is so important and I'm going to emphasize this even more on my videos from now on is your ribbon is the number one issue you have with your typewriter is going to be with your ribbon. And it's not even an issue. It's just remembering because we're so used to computers. Um, when our typewriter stops working, sometimes we're like, oh my goodness, there's something wrong with it. Normally it's your ribbon. Your ribbon needs to be reversed or somehow it's come out of the guide wires, but almost always your ribbon needs to be reversed because when it gets to the end of the spool, it's going to either lock up on you or it's going to like stay in one place over and over and over 
or your font's going to keep getting so faint that you can hardly see it. And if you keep typing, you're going to punch a hole in your ribbon. So as soon as you notice a difference in how your font looks or how your typewriter feels, stop and check your ribbon and reverse the direction. Okay, got it? Good. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a typing demo. Okay, so I'm just gonna set the paper right here. You don't have to shove it in there, you just set it there and then turn the handle and then make sure you pull the bar out. Pull that, run that paper all the way through. I like to go through till it's like halfway there. This tape paper was a little bit bent because it's been sitting in the typewriter. So you can see how crooked that paper is. And that's where you pull the release, paper release, adjust it, and um, make sure it's even which I should have used a straight piece of paper because this one's crooked. I mean, not crooked, it's just curly. All right, so that, it's not perfect, but it looks pretty good. We're gonna come back down here and I'm gonna reset my margins. I like to bring them in um, just so you can hear the bell. And let's go ahead and type. This does not have a number one, so you use lowercase l. So this is a 1954, and this types really, this feels so good. This is going to be a good um, book writing typewriter. Smith Krona. I forgot what it's called. It's super. Okay. Nice, clean um, uh, type. There's no bleed in it or anything like that. It's really crisp. I love to see that. So let's go through and check the keys. These are bouncing back right away. And I love to feel that. I don't feel any hesitation or any stiffness in the keys at all, other than the proper, um, you wanna have some stiffness in the keys. I mean, not stiffness, but firmness. But the bounce back, the it's bouncing right back. And that's really good to see. And these keys are really clean too. What am I on? Um, so yes, this is a book writer's typewriter. For sure. The bell sounds good. Okay, so margin release right here. M R oh, sorry margin release. So when you get to the end of the margin, see how the typewriter just stopped, hit that margin release, and now you can keep going. And just in case you didn't know that. So um, now let's do the red. Oop, margin release. I didn't get that word finished. Okay, this, y'all, this type's amazing. This is a great typewriter. This is going to get an A plus from me. The only thing I've noticed on this, when you first uh, hit the return handle, it didn't, um, uh, it didn't automatically advance to the next line. So what it did is, um, you know, I was out here and then I hit return and see it did it there. But the other times it just returned it. It didn't advance. I had to hit it twice for it to advance a line. That's a, a really, really minor minor thing because it's actually doing it now 
otherwise this was um, performing perfectly um, the feel of it I have not felt something this good in quite a while um, we've had some good typewriters but this the feel on this one is amazing I'm gonna give this an A plus plus excellent machine um, needs to be for somebody who's gonna be doing a lot of writing you're gonna love this and for a manual typewriter because um, I have small hands and so sometimes I struggle with manual typewriters. If you're a fast typist, this manual typewriter is going to keep up with you. Very rarely do I find a manual typewriter that can keep up with a fast typist. And this is going to be one of them. Thanks so much for watching. Take a look at the uh, links in our description below and have a great day.